All right, guys, so now we're going to be talking about someone who's not a great man and then someone who is. This is a new series called Not a Great Man, where we have someone who is obviously not a great man. We'll explain why that is. And then we show someone who is a great man and explain how they are. All right, guys, so in this video, you can see that this man who identifies as a woman is wrestling a woman. This guy is probably about 210, 220 pounds, maybe more. Obviously well built. I believe this is uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well. And so there he's going against maybe a hundred twenty pound woman. But of course this is okay. And one of the comments on this video was how could you be happy with a win from this? How could you be happy with a win from that? You are a two hundred twenty pound man wrestling a woman, but you pretend to be a woman. Obviously that makes you not a great man. I mean first of all Men do not fight women. Men do not fight women. The amount of videos I've seen re recently of full-grown males fighting women, punching them in the face, sucker punching them in the face, because their girl gets mad at some other girl or some dumb thing like that. They think it's okay to punch a girl, to hit a girl. Never, never. And to anyone that was in the audience watching this that did not try to get him to stop, to not actually fight this woman. I mean, at one point he picks her up. It's so easy for him. Anyone who is in the audience is not a man either. You don't let this happen. If you saw a guy punch a girl in the street, you don't just let it happen. I mean, if you're the modern average man, of course you're gonna let it happen. But if you're trying to become a great man, absolutely not, never. So we have this man who Claims to be a woman. Clearly, he's been doing BJJ for a little while, which, again, I assume this is what it is. But then he decided one day, he just woke up and he said, you know, I really feel like I'm in the wrong body. So he grows out his hair a little bit, pretends to be a woman, and then fights 120-pound women for fun. And then celebrates when he wins because it's a fair and clean win, right? Well, now I want to go to someone who is a great man. A very famous wrestler from Iowa named Dan Gable. Now with a lot of great men, they face a lot of trials throughout their life. And I don't remember who it was. It must have been Socrates who said something like, the more trials you face, the more you are favored by the gods. He said something like that. But we'll start off with this. This is part of Dan Gable's story. And it's in 1955 in Waterloo, Iowa. People think Dan Gable isn't afraid of anything, but that's not true. He's deeply afraid of one thing. Hidden in his past, before he even ever wrestled a match. There's a story most people don't know. Even his four daughters had never heard it. When he was a small boy, his parents drank and they fought. The Gables always seemed to be one bad night away from breaking apart, leaving Dan without a family, alone. So when Mac and Katie went out on the town, young Dan would make his way to the front of the house. He would station himself in the big picture window, scared that they'd come home and get divorced, or maybe not come home at all. From time to time, he'd suck his thumb. All night, he'd peer down the street, looking for headlights. Then jumping forward to May 31st, 1964, in Waterloo, Iowa. Dan and his parents went to Harper's Ferry, Iowa, on the Mississippi River, to fish. They left his older sister, Diane, at home. She was 19. And that night, a local boy raped her and stabbed her to death with one of the Gables' kitchen knives. A neighbor found the body. The family threw away all the knives, not knowing which one had been used. Dan's parents fought, torn apart by the murder. They wanted to sell the house and move, but Dan begged them to stay. Nobody touched Diane's room. Her ghost lived there. At night, Dan heard the fights, the words burrowing into his memory, where they'd remain forever. The drinking escalated, he lost his sister, and now his deepest fear was coming true. The family was dying with her, and he would be left alone. One evening, his mother screamed, I wish I'd raised her a whole... And that was all Dan could stand. Enough, he thought. He got out of his bed, crossed the hall, and climbed into Diane's bed, turning to face the wall. Half an hour later, his parents opened the door, humbled by the courage of their son. He felt the bar of light shining on the bed, but stayed still. That night... He didn't sleep a wink. In the morning, he moved his things into Diane's room. The argument slowed, then stopped, and his parents focused their attention on Dan, who started his junior wrestling season on a tear. 
He never lost, and his parents never missed a match. Dan loved the look on their faces when he won. He wrestled with a fury his opponents did not understand. And then jumping forward again to March 28, 1970 in Evanston, Illinois, after moving into Diane's room, Gable kept winning. He graduated from high school 64-0, a three-time state champion. He didn't lose as a sophomore at Iowa State, or as a junior. He won 118 times in college, entering his final match undefeated. An unknown opponent from Washington named Larry Owings waited. ABC's Wide World of Sports showed up and Gable lost. The pain of his sister's death had been waiting on a moment of weakness, an opening, and in defeat, he couldn't find the strength that had gotten his family through her passing. He thought he'd let Diane down. He thought he'd let his mom and dad down. When he got home, he avoided his parents. When his mom would get him on the phone, he couldn't talk. His throat closed and the words refused to come out. Everything unraveled. Katie Gable drove to Ames. She confronted her son and slapped him hard. Dan turned his focus to the Olympics. He got better, more dangerous. Every day for two years, he tortured himself, refusing surgery for the torn cartilage in his knee, scared he would miss out on the Olympics. All else he shoved aside or pushed back down. Nobody scored on him in Munich, and when he won, he tossed the medal into the bottom of his gym bag. For a brief period, his panicked parents thought it was lost. They didn't understand. For him, the reward wasn't a medal, but seeing how winning it made them feel. A family was his reward. Years later, sitting in a Des Moines hotel hot tub, Gable would bring up the Owings loss, which he does about once a day. He tried to describe what it did to him, and to his mom and dad. Finally, choosing his words carefully, he said, it was like a death in the family. So, obviously lots of reading, but this guy's life, this is what a great man's life is like. It doesn't always have to be a brutal murder like that happening in your family or to a friend. But it's about taking the cards you are dealt, the circumstances of life, and doing what you can, and pushing as hard as you can, to get through life, but not just to get through life, to get through life aiming towards something. That's what makes Dan Gable a great man. And I was watching a video on uh, Dan Gable talk about why he lost that final match. And it was because the wide world of sports showed up and he was not good at speaking on camera. They tried so many different takes and eventually he could not get warmed up for the match. And he said that's what made him lose. But either way, that's 118 wins, pushing through pain. That's, that's what great men do. So when we compare the guy, the biological male, at the beginning of the video, who was wrestling a woman who could easily pick her up and submit her, to Dan Gable, who's a great man. Do you think the guy who clearly still has every part of his body attached to him that he was born with, who just decided that he was all of a sudden a female and to grow out and to grow out his hair, who is this guy who is apparently brave. Do you think he compares to Dan Gable in any way? No, absolutely not. And what's the point of sports and especially these fighting sports? What's the point of it? It's to overcome. It's to win. It's not the same as baseball or football or hockey. It's you versus one more person. You are fighting them. You are training months to fight one person or multiple people in a day. But that's what you're working towards. And that becomes the aim of your life. It's about you and trying to better yourself. And obviously a lot of people do it for fame and because it's something that they think they are good at or a path they just want to take. So I'm sure this biological male who's at the beginning of the video was probably doing it for fame because why else would you be a 220 pound man wrestling women doesn't make much sense so anyway guys start up a new series starting off with the uh transgender guy versus dan gable a very admirable man who dealt with quite a lot of pain in his life because of his his sister's brutal death so yeah i hope you guys got something out of this video if you guys have any more requests for uh these not a great man videos where 
or comparing someone who is not a great man to a great man, then I'd love to hear your requests. But this is the first one. I'm glad we're starting this new series. And once again, this is Dan Gable, a very, very great man. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time.